So today, our notes are on organic, we're talking about organic chemistry, and we're beginning to study. So with organic chemistry, in this first section of our notes, this first part, these are some essential questions to help guide your thinking and to help, to help you review at the end. Um, with organic chemistry, the main atom that's going to be focused on is carbon, okay? Because carbon is found in all organic molecules. Um, with carbon, we do need to remember that carbon has four valence electrons. And because it has those four valence electrons, it is usually very likely to form four more bonds, trying to satisfy that octet rule. Now carbon itself, keep in mind, is not very electronegative. So it doesn't really have a strong pull on those electrons that it's trying to bond with. Because of that, it does usually, it does usually end up forming these non-polar, polar, I can spell today, bonds, okay? The reason why bonding is so important in this unit and that's why we're spending time on this is because the way they bond and the electronegativity can affect the function of those molecules. And later on we're going to see, just like how we had talked about a little bit about lipids and the cell membrane, how those chemical properties allow them to function a certain way. So along with carbon, we have groups of carbon that are made up of carbon and hydrogen that form chains. So hydrocarbons are chains of carbon and hydrogen that actually are generally very non-polar. Okay? Remember that carbon is not very electronegative and the difference between the electronegativity of both carbon and hydrogen it isn't very significant at all. So they will form together to form a non-polar molecule. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that with hydrocarbons, they are saturated, saturated with hydrogen, okay? So here you have these carbon molecules. These are carbon skeletons. Here in the center, you have the carbons, and then they're completely full. All the bonds are made with those hydrogens, so they're completely full of them. They're saturated with them. Um, and because they are nonpolar, that is also um, an indicator that all those electrons are shared equally. Okay. Now, with hydrocarbons, we have several types that should kind of sound familiar to you, and they propane butane. These three carbons can actually, or carbo hydrocarbons, can be used as fuels. The reason why they can be used as fuels is because the bond between carbon and hydrogen contains a lot of energy. Okay. Now the shapes of these, if you notice, can be very, very different. They can um, be a straight chain, they can have some branching, they can have rings, they can have double bonds that are forming between those carbon molecules. And so the shapes, very important thing for us to remember is that shape helps to determine function. And I'm gonna write that as F X N. Okay. Now another thing we need to know about these hydrocarbons are is that they can have isomers of each other. And an isomer is a different shape of the same 
chemical formula. So here we have the same amount of carbons and hydrogens, but they are shaped differently, okay? Their structures can be different. Um, naming, with naming of hydrocarbons, usually you'll see that ane or ene, like butene, okay? And that suffix will indicate that it is a hydrocarbon, and you should be able to identify those. So those hydrocarbons usually act as the base of organic molecules. And those bases can then be joined to or will then bond to what are called functional groups. So functional groups really are just additions to that carbon hydrogen chain or carbon hydrogen skeleton. Okay? Um, the effect of the functional group is that it can change the polarity. Okay? It can make something more polar. And it can also change the function or behavior. It can determine the function or behavior of that molecule. So in our example here, we have estradiol and testosterone, okay? Both of these, if you look at the hydrocarbon portion of it, it's very, very similar. There's very little difference until you get to that last hexagon, that last ring. And when you get to that very end there, you have these functional groups that change this molecule. And they change it so much that this is what determines you're being a female, and this is what determines that you're a male, okay? And gives you those secondary sex characteristics. So with the functional groups, there's several functional groups that we do need to know of specifically. Um, the first one, this line, this bond is indicating that it's connected to a carbon, by the way. This first one is hydroxyl. This hydroxyl group, it's a functional group, is very polar. Okay, that oxygen is very polar. And then the next one is carbonyl, or carbonyl, I'm sorry, carbonyl. And this one, so this one had kind of the highest polarity, the carbonyl group, because of the way we have that double bond here, it's still polar, but it's kind of a medium level polarity. And again, this is important because it's going to affect the functioning of the molecules. Then next, what we have, oh, one thing we want to add here to the carbonyl groups is that if this group is in the interior or in the center of one of those hydrocarbons, then we call it a ketone, K-E-T-O-N-E. -E. And if the carbonyl is on the um, exterior, we call it an aldehyde. Okay. And those are just some names to, based on the position. Um, and then the last one right here is going to be our carboxyl group. Carboxyl. And the carboxyl does have a high polarity as well. Okay. And sometimes you'll also hear it called car carboxylic. Again, these functioning groups, later on we're going to learn a little more about how they actually interact. And these are going to be those attachments to those hydrocarbons. Um, there are three more that we need to know of and that we'll need to be able to identify.
The next one has the nitrogen in it. This is going to be our amine group. And that should kind of remind you of an amino acid. So this is a lot of times found in our proteins. And this has a, again, a medium level polarity. Okay, not super strong. The next one is sulfhydryl. And again, a medium polarity. This last one is a phosphate group. Should look really familiar, found on ATP and DNA, the nucleotides. And the phosphate, notice, does have a charge, and it actually has the highest charge. Because notice, we do have those two right there. And this makes it very soluble in water. Okay? Remember that those ionic bonds, the more polar you are, the more likely you are able to um, dissolve in water. So these, notice that um, these are usually endings to those hydrocarbons. These are functional groups that you'll need to know the names of, and you'll have to have an idea of its polarity or its charge. And we're going to see these again in our organic macromolecules. And they are going to affect the functioning of those groups. Do you notice that this is leading our way to CHNOPs, okay? Giving, the, giving us those six essential elements that are found in all living things. Um, at the bottom here, you're going to see the carbon review. So do make sure you take, spend a minute um, going over that. Make sure that you're looking at the groups and identifying the entire group. But this last part right here, building from small to large. Here we are actually talking about forming, using monomers and building them into those polymers, those bigger molecules. So here, again, we're talking about synthesis of the polymers, okay? So let's remind ourselves of what those are. Remember that mono means one. A monomer or a subunit are the same thing. They are the building blocks of bigger macromolecules. They are going to form together to form our polymer or our macromolecule. So these are repeating units of our um, monomers and subunits. In order for a polymer to be formed, the process of dehydration synthesis must occur so that those monomers can join together. So dehydration synthesis. Dehydration, we take out water to build something together. So here we are removing water. Oh, H2O. Sorry, that's water, H2O. And remember that this is going to require enzymes, so you just want to keep that in the back of your head. Um, in this picture, they're showing you two different, um, two di I'm sorry, the same monomer. And the monomer is going to lose water, so they're going to take an OH from over here and an H from here. They'll join together and leave as water to form this, this polymer and it actually ends up being a disaccharide, okay? And we'll talk about this more later.